Hello, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing good. So today I wanted to talk about probably the hardest pill I had to swallow when coming to terms with being the scapegoat in a narc family. And that's knowing that my parents and brother never loved me. And while it's a devastating thing to learn, it's also incredibly liberating as it gave me that final push to go no contact. And as we know, narcs lack empathy and as such they can't love. This doesn't mean that we're unlovable or bad, it just means we were dealt a lousy hand when it came to the families we were born into. And in narc families, instead of unconditional love, there's unquestioning loyalty and the worship of one person, not dissimilar to a cult. There's actually a quote by George Bernard Shaw that goes, a family is a tyranny ruled by its weakest member. And all he was missing there was the word narcissistic. There's no warmth, depth or vulnerability where we share our hopes, dreams and fears and know each other intimately. It's a world of shallow, superficial, surface level mundanity that's more akin to the workplace environment in a job you hate. In fact, my dad has always had this weird employer-employee style approach to me, even when I was a child, including plenty of the passive-aggressive textbook per my last email corporate language. I actually remember an incident just before I went no contact where my dad sent his monthly dispassionate how are you text and for once in my life I was honest and I said I'm not coping the pandemic has caused me to relapse into restricting my eating I'm having panic attacks and I'm not okay and his loving fatherly response Okay. And then he ghosted me for another month. The dude's an emotionless robot, um, but I guess 50 years married to a sociopathic succubus will do that to a person. This was also during what would be my mother's last silent treatment, but before I knew what a flying monkey or narc supply was. So that little nugget of premium grade supply must have kept her high for weeks. And my golden child brother, he's very much like my dad in that he treats me with the same detached, emotionless approach. And the golden child in narc families is, of course, trained to see us as less than, and the narcs intentionally prevent us being close like normal siblings, because the scapegoat has to be made to feel as isolated as possible to stop us upsetting the apple cart that is the fake front. Narcs can't love simply because they can't be vulnerable, something that's essential to forming meaningful relationships. They're fear and shame-based creatures, and they feel that if they're vulnerable, it's a sign of weakness, and it leaves them open to being hurt, so they hide behind their facade, and they puff themselves up as being invincible, superior beings. Of course, narcs love using vulnerability as a way to hurt other people, though. If someone reveals to a narc that they're allergic to peanuts, a narc will file that information away for a rainy day. And if that person displeases them weeks, months or years later, guaranteed the narc will be at their door with a super thoughtful gift of expensive artisanal peanut brittle. And then they'll play the victim while that person is wheezing and turning red. Narcs think that other people have the same thoughts as them and think other people play the same manipulative mind games. So they guard their innermost being with their lives. They want all our secrets, but they'll never share theirs. All we get are shallow, emotionless expressions of love, in inverted commas, usually in the form of extravagant grand gestures and love bomby gifts, which of course we end up paying for when the inevitable devalue and discard rolls around. And narcs will often do good deeds, mimicking genuinely decent people, but for very different reasons. A good example of this is when my mother's church, and the whole religion thing is a whole other video, um, my mother's church launched a cute Let's Do Knitted Toys for Kids in Yemen project. Now the congregation of this church is largely very elderly ladies, and so they take a while to finish their one or two dollies, but they were made with love. So my mother sends me a photo of her entire bed covered in the ones that she made, easily over a hundred, as some kind of weird flex. 
and I understand she made quite a big deal of it when she handed them over to a probably equally bewildered vicar too. She didn't do this project for the sake of doing good. She saw it as a competition against arthritic 90-year-olds. Plus, she's got to fuel the good old martyr complex. Narcs don't do genuinely caring gestures. There's no sentimentality, nothing of genuine value to be had in them. There's no hugs, there's no playfulness. There's no laughing till you can't breathe. None of the beautiful qualities of a normal family home. Our narc parents never bothered to truly know who we are as people. I never bothered showing us who they are. My parents have about 10 photographs of me in total, the last one taken probably 25 or 30 years ago. There's no photos of the whole family, and I've never even seen their wedding photo. Meanwhile, they've got thousands of photos of random buildings from their many vacations. It's so weird. And yet us scapegoats are the biggest softies you'll find on the planet. We were trained to be people pleasers, and overly attentive to the feelings and needs of others, putting our own interests last. A friend of mine once compared me to that little dog in the movie Up, the one that says to every new person he meets, Hello, my name is Doug. I just met you and I love you. And they're not wrong. We have a tendency to wear our hearts in our sleeves, and we're so starved of love, we spill our entire life story to strangers at the supermarket. And in doing so, we put ourselves at risk of being exploited and ultimately devastated. Being raised as the scapegoat in a narc family puts us at high risk of ending up with narc partners, as that kind of treatment is what's most familiar to us. That's why it's so important to keep educating yourself about the red flags to look out for in potential love interests, new friends, work colleagues, roommates and so on. Our narc families never loved us, because they lack the ability to do so. It has nothing to do with us being unlovable, and has a lot more to do with them being empty, nihilistic shells of people. I know I'd rather be that weirdo who cries at insurance adverts, and elderly couples holding hands in the street. And love is out there for us scapegoats, but we need to learn to identify the people who deserve us, and tell the users and abusers of the world, including our family, to go kick rocks. So, with that, look after yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.